These AFDDs are a complete pain in the bum, or so I thought. Let me explain. So this right here is a Wilex 3036 fuse box. Now, confession time, okay? This is a family member's house. And you know the saying, window cleaners never tend to have win clean windows at home. It probably shouldn't translate to electrics, but definitely some things probably get procrastinated when it's for love and done on the weekends and done after work. Sometimes love is procrastinated. So I thought, do you know what? This box here looks like an absolute pain to replace. I thought, ah, I've got an idea. This is fed from a fuse board over there, an actual consumer unit. I'll put an AFDD upstream, arc fault detection device, and that'll protect it. It'll give it 30 milliamp RCD protection over here. It'll also give it, if there was ever an arc fault or anything like that, it'll trip. So no fires, leave it. Anyway, I've been getting calls from my beloved family saying, oh, that, that fancy device you put in has been tripping. Oh, could be an extension lead, could be a variety of things that's causing it to happen, but it's definitely not a fault because this has been tightened up, it's been tested, everything in here is solid. And also it's a piece of kit from the 80s. Like everyone knows stuff from the 80s is solid. Morrissey and Wilex fuse boxes. However, actually that arc fault detection device might have just saved this house. That is absolutely terrible. That is a, a fire on a stick, a fire waiting to happen. All of these are all completely melted out. I don't know if you can quite see this here. This is literally bare copper, bare corroded copper. But what doesn't make sense to me is it looks to me like condensation or water ingress or a loose connection, but everything is solid and tight. And that was checked at the time of the board change. So I was a little bit confused and that is until I noticed this little stud right here no, wrong, wrong, wrong stud. This little stud there is actually loose. You see, that's, that's a manufacturer's connection there. That's not something that can be tightened up. It's just something that's obviously worked loose over time. And the crazy thing is, I never would have even noticed that. Never would have known about it. Typically you think, oh, well, tighten up every screw and nothing's gonna go wrong. But that's a manufacturer issue right there. But to be fair to the manufacturer, this board is probably 40 something years old. So here's the thing, right? This house, family moved here a few years back. Now, a builder used to live here and has clearly done a lot of the electrics. Ironically, they said everything's been done professionally. Well, I guess he has a profession, but clearly that profession is not electrician. I've got Oliver with me today. Doesn't really need much introduction at this point. Um, here's the thing, Oliver. A lot of the stuff that I've come across over the years of doing little bits and pieces at this house, I'm like, oh, that's not really quite right. Not all of it's deadly. If it's deadly, then obviously I've put it right within two to three business days. But when it's like the code threes, I'd say I'm like, okay, really? We've got a lighting circuit with four mil cable, I believe, in the loft. Um, there's a couple of little bits like that where I'm like, it's not really right, but I'll do something about that soon. Um, but what I'm thinking is, while we're here today, while we've got all of this going on, let's just put all of these things right. And also it'd be quite exciting to show you some of the bodgery that I know is in here. And so that you can see that I'm a just humongous hypocrite. All these times that I've come around to you saying, this is deadly, something should be done about this right now. And then I've got my lovely family sleeping inside a house with that kind of workmanship going on. I think we should take you to the loft. Sure. Right, don't say it too enthusiastically. Just say, sure, sure. All right, so this section of the house, before they moved in, I believe it was an old garage. You can tell where some of the circuits are kind of old garage circuits that have needed to be, oh man, what sort of style loft hatch is that? <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. This is no lie. In fact, we'll see the evidence of it up there. They used to be the biggest wasp nest in the world in this loft and we could not get rid of it. Like we had it, I don't think it was gassed, but someone came and did something to it. And by someone came and did something to it, I went up there once, was taped up as much as I possibly could be and sprayed it and almost died and fell out of this loft. That also used to absolutely terrify me every time I went up there to, uh, to do any work. So I believe they're gone. I'll go first. Or well, in fact, just in case there is wasps, do you want to go first? And uh, I'll go first. Oh, it's so full of junk. That's like hoarders. Route 66, gas pump. Stop looking at my personal effects. All right, so if we go that way. Oh, the wasp nest was down here somewhere. Look, there's evidence, there's dead wasps everywhere. Dark times gone by. I'll tell you one thing we could definitely unplug. See that multifunctional box over there? That 
can be unplugged. It's wired in T&E. Oh my goodness. That lost light is ancient. Yeah, probably should have a stuff like a thing on the end of it, but I think I'd sooner just unplug that and forget about it. I seem to recall it being really bad up here, like loads of botchery everywhere and badgerness. Oh, there's another evidence of some wasp nest. Yes, it's not ideal that we go from 2.5 to 4 mil back to 2.5, but it's on a 20 amp fuse. So as long as that smallest piece of cable is appropriately fused, so the fuse is the weakest part of the circuit, not the cable. I'm not really too worried about that. Is there anything else you can see up here? I don't think so. I think we're all right. If you check over there, inside that marks of box, I believe there is a microphone. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it does look like a microphone. What? It is a really cool microphone if it is in there. Yes, oh, it is in there. Look at that. That is quality. You should just use that. I reckon we should change the theme of this video entirely and sack off electrics. I, I lived here for a period of time, so there is a lot of junk here. I lived here in between living places, and as you can tell, I've, I've made my mark, clearly. There's nothing but up here but wasp detritus and old musical equipment, but I'm having quite a lot of fun. I found an old PlayStation 3. I'm just looking for my Crash Bandicoot, and then I'll be sorted. How much do you think that mic's worth? That mic, I don't think it's worth much. 45 quid. Is it? Yeah, I didn't have money. I still don't really. It looks good though. Yeah, it looks good, yeah. Should we actually do some electrical work? I think we probably should. Oh, that's an... There's a blooming symbol up here. Is it a good one? Ah, oh, nah. This is Ildrum, but it's like their budget line. Alright, so I reckon we make a start in here getting all of this out. This is gonna be a pain and this has gotta be replaced. This is, I think this is all that's caused the issue. There is one cable I remember was giving me an issue, okay? So when I actually put the AFD upstream, this was dripping, but this was half of a ring and it broke, I believe, at a socket over there. So, so the I've, yeah, it was on a 20 amp anyways, 20 amp fuse. So that is now just a radio, but I'd be quite curious to see if we could actually investigate that a little bit further as well. But can I ask you to start with ripping that out? and just get it down to the bare cables. Make sure you don't lose that cable in the wall because this is hollow. <laughs> right, this was kicking about in the van and that happens to be the absolute perfect size to go inside of there. So what I'm thinking is that SWA gland straight into there. We don't need to earth it this side, it is earth that side. So we could just connect into the plastic there. A little piece of din rail, some nice Wago din rail connectors in there. Um, and then FlexiCon out of the side and maybe just put it what do you reckon, just there, next to it? Or we could go underneath there. Though they're probably more likely to put screws in it if we go there, maybe just there. Can I leave you to do that? Yeah. It's not so much how you say yeah, it's more that I feel like we're running on Windows 98. It's just like Internet Explorer speeds, do you know what I mean? Rather than, do you want to do this? Yeah, it's like, do you want to do this? <laughs> Dial up time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's cool, it's, it's early in the morning for you. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Perfect. Right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so first job is going to be to get this old board out. Um, the screws are a bit rusted, so that might be a little bit of a challenge, but um, get all these cables stripped back, get rid of all the burnt wires, and then, uh, yeah, it'll be ready to fit this box in place. This thing is completely rusted on, so that makes me believe even more so that there could actually be a little bit of water ingress in there. The weird thing is, when that bit was tightened up only a few years back, it... Oh! I know what would have got water in there. There was a flood. Right, there was a flood. You see this light here, this awful, horrible, minging thing? We were replacing these later for something that actually looks nice. There was a flood and the water was so bad it was coming out of here. I wonder if a little bit of water has tracked its way over and into that board because that gland shouldn't be that rusted on. And when I tested it, it was only tested maybe two years ago, three years ago, it was fine. It was in good condition. Like, the, okay, the rewirable fuse boards are old, but they're good quality kit, solid. Like all of this engineering is absolutely beautiful um but that makes a lot of sense it must have been from that flood. What a wally. i don't even think of water getting over there i remember water coming out here taking it down drying it replacing the light and it was done but anyway sucks to be ollie having to get that rusted gland off 
Meanwhile, I'm out there fixing heating wiring, ready for a new boiler and a bunch of other jobs out there, which we will come to. I thought I'd given him the easy job. Nice. So seeing as the Verso AFDD kind of saved the day, I thought I'd order another Verso board to go out here. Um, so they've sent me one mildly bigger than what I was actually hoping for. I was kind of aiming for like a four-way board, but you know what, we've got this, we'll use it. I guess there's no harm in having spare ways, but I'm thinking, would it be easier just to take that little edge architrave off, heat shrink these cables through, extend them straight into the back of the board and just have this like mounted over that hole. I think if we cover that hole, it's probably gonna look better to be honest. I think it will look nicer because I've always thought that was a bit random. And actually it takes up literally the same mm. floor area as was wasted with that anyways. All right, so while Oliver is over there struggling with that gland, I'm in here struggling with this. So I've been messing up all of my nice work from years gone by. The real channel members and real fans will recognize this board, right? This board was installed when we fitted solar to the house. I've put things on AFDDs and downrated circuits because a lot of the rings and a lot of the things in here, I couldn't confirm. They were what I call a builder's ring. Oh, um, a builder's ring is when people have a go at working on a ring circuit and don't quite uh, know what they're doing and you end up with figure of eights and all of that kind of mess. So to fix it, sometimes it's easiest just to downrate the breaker to a 20 amp so you're still protecting the weakest part of the circuit. The reason why we use rings in the UK is actually back to World War II because a lot of Americans, not Europeans watching this, are going, a ring, what's he talking about? Does this come kind of a joke? No, we use ring circuits because we had a shortage of copper during World War II. And if you have two 2.5 mil cables running correctly in a circuit then you end up with a 5 mil cable so you have two 2.5s in parallel however if it's not a correct ring and you end up with cross connections and things that part of the circuit then all of a sudden is on its own it's a spur and those spurred circuits now are a 2.5 mil cable protected by a 32 amp breaker which is too big so that could potentially heat up and become the weak part of the circuit so we don't want that i've managed to trace this so this was just old crud and that was all part of the old ring which wasn't a ring so i thought if it's going to be a radial i want it to be a proper radial so any interconnections and crisscrosses i'm not bothering with making it a ring again because i really don't like the ring circuit to be honest with you i much prefer just to have a good quality solid radial so i've i've been ripping out all the interconnections testing point to point to point to work through this house is not usually this messy can i just add this is me emptying cupboards and pulling things out but these two I've been tracking for like the last half an hour, honestly gone full Columbo on them and I cannot find for the life of me where they go to. It was live and I thought, seeing as I can't test it, it's not a leg between points, it's not a leg between the ring, it's not anything really that I can tell. I've just chopped it this end and I've been thoroughly going around testing. So I think that was just an extra spur. So that's gone. So I think in my head, I know it's OCD, I just want to know that everything that's there is not just passable but safe, but I can also just trace the circuits so that if there is ever a problem now, while I'm living so far away, I can say, right, well, I know that cable comes from the board to the fridge, direct to the dishwasher and ends there. Basically, I know exactly where the cables end. That is the plan, just to get this absolutely spot on electrical system inside this house. Right, so the next one that I'm looking at is this one here. So this is the old socket circuit for a big portion of the house. So when they built this house, I believe they did what's called a stitch ring, where you go upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. So it's really confusing for fault finding on and really confusing for the poor builder that probably did mess up the ring. Um, so it's a pain and that's why I downrated it to a 20 amp so that it was no longer an issue anymore. It was then basically just an overcomplicated radial. But it is now a nuisance tripping and I believe after doing some insulation resistance testing and things, I believe it's just overloaded that breaker. My plan is to see if I can go round and find exactly where it is that that ring is actually broken. The other one that is causing issues is the circuit for this boiler. However, this is a nightmare, right? So this, this boiler, you'll see inside of there, that is the fused spur for it. So to get to that is a complete and utter nightmare. This boiler is being ripped out in two weeks. Now that is a been about two years in the making, to be honest with you. So that's kind of been why it's left, because like, oh, we're getting a new boiler soon, we're getting a new boiler soon. Um, but we actually are getting a new boiler. So I think what I'm going to do is run a new circuit from here up and out 
to the new boiler location, which is going to be in the loft at the other end, and then maybe power this temporarily directly from there to that dedicated circuit so that it's not on that other ring, because that being spurred off of the ring is causing the ring to trip. That's the only thing that I can see with an issue, and I can't even get to the fuse spur to <laughs> fault find on it. So this house is such a house of nightmares, but I'm sure lots of you have got houses like that. But the ironic thing is that the house of nightmares is my family's house. It's now my responsibility and my mission to go through and comb through all the crap. So you kind of have two ways that we can test for this. So we can either use one of the little adapters like this one. You can see it has your R2, R1, RN, and you can kind of use that and test from the board. Or I think the way I'm going to do it today is grab a couple of these little jumper leads, jump it out, and then go plug it in to the sockets and just work my way round and see what's happening with the resistances. Zero the leads, and we're gonna go end to end just to make sure that it is a ring. So 0 0.44. So if this is a proper ring, we expect these to be the same resistance value because it's the same size cable and it's going the same distance. So 0 0.46, yeah, I'm happy with that within 0.2 of an ohm. Test our R2, which we expect on this cable to be about 1.67 times higher than that because this is a 1.5 mil and that's a 2.5 mil. So we'll test that. So that is okay. So now here's the true test, which before I found spurs, but I think I might have been able to rip all of those out now. So we need to find the earth from one circuit and cross connect it to the earth of the other circuit. So we're creating a little figure of eight. And then we're gonna take our tester and go for a little walk. Right, so now I think I've removed all of the spurs from the circuit. So I wanna see if I can make this circuit a ring again by basically making sure it's a proper ring. So the way we do that is we cross connect, as I've shown you on the other side, and now we're gonna go around to each point and test them. We wanna make sure that each point is definitely dead and on that circuit, otherwise you'll pop the fuse in your side your tester, and I'll speak from experience there. Now I've got this plugged in, it saves me taking the face plates off, and I'm testing between R1 and R2, so line and earth. You're gonna plug that in. And now the resistance I expect to see on here should be my R1 plus RN that we tested at the board earlier. And I'm gonna divide that by four. So that will give me approximately 0 0.24, 0 0.25. So that within that region is what I'm expecting to see here. So there you go, 0 0.26. So I know that this socket is good. Now, because the way the ring is wired, every reading should be 0 0.26. If I see that reading climbing or descending, then I know that we have an interconnection somewhere. And that means that then we've either got a spur or an improper ring, which is obviously a bit of an issue. So if we just nip round. Here we go, already socket number two, and the reading has climbed to 0 0.35. If it was like 0 0.27 or 0 0.23, I wouldn't be too worried, but with it being that high, there's definitely an improper ring, um, which is really frustrating to be honest, because now to put that right, it means running cables and chopping up walls or downrating the breaker as we already have to the B20, because we can't really climb above that. So not much to be done about that really. Right, let's carry on investigating. 0.26, Do you know what? I'm happy with that. That one is part of the ring. All right, so all of these now are testing out pretty much spot on. So that means now all of those spurs removed and this is testing well, I can upgrade this back to a ring again now. So there's no more dodgy spurs. So that should eliminate the problems with nuisance tripping. So while I'm upgrading that breaker, I'll let you go check in on Oliver. Corey's got the other end of this submarine onto a 40 amp circuit breaker now. So all the RCD protection is gonna be coming from this board. So we've got two 20 amps, two sixes. So the lights, we're fairly confident, are sound. So we're putting those back first, and then we've got to figure out what's going on with these 2.5s. I think um, we're gonna try and make it a 20 amp radial, but we're not sure why these are taped up. All right, so these lights here used to be those horrible globe lights. And my plan is, while Oliver is changing the board, it's starting to get a bit dark in here now. So it'd be quite nice to just at least turn the lighting circuit on. And before, these were the only real options to replace those, the, what I call dinner plate lights. What, what do you call these? Like flat panel LEDs things. Why do you have to do everything properly? 
But there is a new contender to the market and you know how much I love the JCC V50s. I put them on everything. They've got a new line at the minute called the Retrofit range. So it's a JCC V50 light. It's the same gubbins, it's the same everything except this plate here is much bigger. And the other option was to use one of the horrible converter plates. But I hate those, whereas this is much nicer. It's exactly the same as a V50. So you've got your little toggle switch there. So you can change between warm white and cool white and all the rest of it. But it will cover a hole from I think 95 mil up to 135 mil. So that will sit absolutely perfectly in there and just look an awful lot nicer. So it's handy when you've got jobs when you're not exactly sure of the cut outside when you're retrofitting. It saves you having to repair the plaster or repair the plasterboard. You could literally just pop that in there. Um, and they have a variety of sizes on there as well, which will be on screen right now. So we're gonna put these in. Do you wanna join me getting these in and we can work not in the darkness? What do you think of using flex on a lighting circuit or just on a general power circuit really? It's weird that it's become like frowned upon because generally if you find it you know it's been like bodged by a builder. To be honest if, you, if it's done in commercial on tray neatly you wouldn't bat an eyelid. I prefer you? it. I think like, why, I don't why, why do we twin use and twin and earth so much? Heat dissipation. I think it's that old thing about flat cable dissipates heat but we oversize everything in this country quite a lot, so I don't really know how much difference. Because really in well. Europe, I just don't see twin enough. It's all flex. Flex inside conduit or just flex. Or singles. Yeah, or singles through conduit. So I find that quite interesting that we're still so set on it. But bizarrely, they use if they use solid copper... Can I nick your cutters, please? ...on the continent, they still use a round style flex cable. It's not flex, it's solid, but it's still round, like MYY. This idea of not needing the converter plate is actually really neat. It's about time someone did it, really. It looks, it looks a lot better. What I like is I've actually been to their factory in Chichester and they had people just taking down lights and putting them back up again, which I was so impressed by. They had a guy, just a local tradesman there, taking down their, I think it was their Tough Lead Pro or something, and they were going, is there anything else you'd prefer? Is there something that you feel is missing? Is there this? Is there that? And they're standing there with clipboards taking notes. And I feel JCC got a bad rap a few years ago for one bad downlighter they did. I never actually worked with it or saw it, to be honest. I did. Oh, did you? Was it bad? Uh, it just failed. But then, I, it, like you say, they've, they've acted on it. Like, I've actually had them personally message me on Instagram and they've, they've sorted it for me. So. That's, what more can you ask for, really? Yeah. Henceforth, I shall be trying to integrate their products into as many of my projects as I can because I seriously respect their way of doing business. And also, I really like their R&D and projects, products they come out with. Like, I'm going to show you one of these up close, but this driver, I've just wired that in like less than a minute, and that's with all my yabbering. Just to give you an idea as well of how easy this is to wire, both sides of it is accessible. So that completely folds back. You can get to the terminals, make sure you've really made a good connection, and then that pops on. The cable grip then pops on. That's solid. Plug in your driver. Also, this works with all of the V50 range and you just pop that up in the ceiling. As simple as that. Can't really beat that. Should we just switch that lighting circuit on? There we go, lovely. Don't need this now. Really nice quality light, nice level of light. I'm happy with that. Right then, should we get to testing these sockets then? And yeah. Get those on and uh, figure out where that dodgy connection is as well. Okay, so here's the mission, right? You see all of these cables in here. We've got this one here which is on the 20 amp. So this, I believe, is the downstairs sockets, which at the minute, it seems to be doing just that. Some of these are just old and have been just taped up in the back of that board for eons, except I'd like to try and suss out what they actually do and where they go, because I want to be completely sure that these are never going to be live and causing an issue inside the board ever again. What do you reckon, Ollie? If we just do continuity, maybe between here and the different areas, maybe if I just run a long lead upstairs even and test which neutrals and which lives are connected upstairs. But why don't we just see if everything's on upstairs before you even go that far? Yeah, let's do that. Well, I've got my plug tester here. All right, this half of the building is dead. That's interesting. Ollie, this, this wall here is dead. Well, that isn't. That isn't, no. So I wonder if they've even wired it rather than upstairs, downstairs. I wonder if they've wired it that half, this half. Mm. And maybe it made sense once upon a time when this was a garage. I'll run upstairs quickly and check some of the upstairs sockets while that's live. All right. 
Oh, it's dark now, we've got no lights up here. I have got, though, this absolute beast. There it is. Oh, there we go, that's easier. This torch is absolutely fantastic. It's the IL925R, and uh, if you want to get that, I've got a unique discount code, which you will only be able to find on my page. And I like it because it fits perfectly in my trouser pocket there. So I've always got it on me. It's got a magnet on the back and a variety of different options for lighting. And the battery lasts absolutely ages, but that is not pertinent right now to this fault find. Yeah, so that, we're dead up here, Ollie. Right, that's all dead. So the upstairs is definitely separate. I mean, if we liven those and that trips, then we know they've borrowed a neutral, but that's not really the best way. Well, I would rather not liven them. Yeah. Did I take a picture? I just want to confirm. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, that's interesting. That looks a bit suspicious, doesn't it? What's I think they were both idea? connected. Where's the neutral block? Yeah, they were both connected. The ones with tape were in there, but just had a unduly amount of tape on them. That means they were both connected, but it wasn't a ring, which is why it has been downrated to the 20 amp. Right, so we've just been trying to do the cross connect test to see if this actually is a ring. We're trying to suss out the old problem because um, we are getting end to end on some of them, but at the minute, over there, what are you getting over there now with the cross connect? Nothing. Nothing, right, so. On neutral either. Yeah, because, well, the reason why it says on neutral Evo is because sometimes polarity is wrong. The R1 plus R2 test also confirms polarity, basically meaning the line of neutral, the right way round, because um, you're referencing it to Earth. So let's not do a cross connect. Let's just treat it like a standalone radial R1 plus R2. Do you want to check again over there? Because then I'll leave that cable disconnected. Oh, hold on a minute. I've got it on the ohm symbol. I wasn't pressing test. Sorry. So that's oh. 0.28 now. Go back to your cross. 0.28, that's about what I'd expect. What have got now? 0.2. 0.2. Oh, so there is a cross connect. Can we do line and neutral cross connect for a minute, please? If you just switch between line and neutral. Oh, sorry. Oh, one plus R in, yeah. I didn't mean that in a sassy Line's way. neutral, I don't understand you. <laughs> do you mean R one plus R in? Okay, what we've got over there now? 0.14, so we're good. Oh, actually, sorry, sorry, sorry. I've not cross connected. Let me just quickly. Okay, what have you got now? 0.14. 0.14, interesting. Okay, do you want to check the other socket? Okay, what have you got on that now? R1, R2. R1 plus RN. 0.07. Okay, so yeah, it's all over the shop. Let's get an end-to-end -end over here. If we've got end-to-ends on them all, we keep it on a B20, but we connect, we keep the neutral connected. 0.18. 0.18. What about now? 0.09. So it does like that, okay. And now? 0.34. There's nothing that will quite test your knowledge and abilities like blooming cowboy electrics. <laughs> So in station resistance, I'm sending the current out of this one and receiving it. Do you know what? I reckon that's all right, Ollie. It's connected as a ring. I'm happy with that. So if we could stick that in the B20, we'll leave this one disconnected because I don't know what that was doing, but that's not related to that. So happy. Well, I've pretty much finished my side of things now. I've managed to get the ring back on. I've managed to separate the boiler circuit and a few other little bits. But Oliver now has got the fun job, which was honestly heart, hand on heart meant to be the easy job, but I feel bad. And as usual, because we're working together and you're still in LA time. Um, yeah, we're working a bit late, but I feel bad. Can I at least make you a coffee? That would be nice. What do you want? With that coffee machine, I feel like I can ask for a latte or something. Oat milk? Yes, please. I'll make you an absolute banger of coffee. Let's do it. <laughs> Is the thing, there's a bit of a, is it the Lichtenstein test? What is it where you have to guess what the blob is? See if you can guess what I've made you there. It's come exactly as it's meant to be. Pac-Man. That is exactly <laughs> what I made. Pac-Man, yeah. See, that is Pac-Man. See, the key is, if you want to make good latte art, is don't tell them what it is until after they've guessed. And then I have a 100% success rate with making whatever it is I want to make. Thank Enjoy. You. Yeah. A nice slurpy sound. <laughs> Alright man, beautiful work as always. So I just need to pick up some blanks for that. But that is a far sight better than what was there. So typically I don't really like to make a video unless I've got some big explosive, it really super, give me an adjective. Drag. 
oh my days, dramatic <laughs> video topic to do like, I don't know, a gas turbine breaking down and almost blowing up a city or hydrogen power. Oh, that's coming actually. Or um, spin studios in Berlin. I don't usually like to make a video and, um, just about tracing faults around the house. However, the reason why I've decided to do that today is because AFDDs are quite a sparked subject of heat and debate at the minute, aren't they? <laughs> the debate is, are they really worth the extra expense? And it's a new device, but here's the thing. Arc fault detection devices are not new. They're in many other parts of the world. They're in the other continents. Like for example, in the USA, they have arc fault detection devices as standard in a lot of places. However, they've got these lovely big breaker panels. We're working in the constraints of each device being 18 mil wide. So you can understand why manufacturers have struggled to fit them here in the UK. Why on earth we don't in the UK just change to having big three-phase boards, which in newer builds you'll see from my videos, I'm starting to incorporate that and trying to bring that over here. Some manufacturers I feel have not caught on, as you'll see in David Savory's videos and John Ward's videos. Some manufacturers haven't caught on and the AFDDs are not of good quality. However, in this scenario, this has really changed my outlook because I installed an AFDD here and I feel it's prevented catastrophe. To be honest, it's prevented that old board catching fire. So will I now be incorporating them a lot more as standard on white goods, tumble dryers, all that kind of thing? Absolutely. And should you subscribe, like to both myself and Oliver and come back for the next video because I promise it will be even more exciting. To be honest, I, I, I don't know. It's up to you. Check your calendar. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.